Welcome back to another episode of Salt Shaker Conversations. My name is Kiara Jones. I am Crystal Jones Walton III. Dr. Carmen Jones Harris. Dr. Edna Jones Miller. And you have food on your belt. But Salt Shaker <laughs> Conversations <laughs> are conversations with the Jones girl that allow transparency, <laughs> authenticity. <laughs> And empowerment Ooh. through meaningful conversation. <laughs> yes. So, on a heavier note, no, we're going to be talking about processing grief. Mm-hmm. That is a huge thing now. You know, people have, have dealt with a lot of loss and, and, you know, how do you process it? How do you go mm-hmm. through that? And I think it looks different for everybody. Um, you know, our personal story is, you know, both of our parents have passed away. So we've had to walk through that process twice. Um, and, and your father yes. has passed away. Um, and you've had to walk through that process. So um, I, I would like to start with Crystal. Crystal, how would you like to, you know, talk about like your your grief process? And I don't know if, I mean, because it's only been what, two years? Yeah, two, two years. Yeah, it's been two years almost. Wow. Uh, yeah, just, just over two oh, years. Yeah. Like kind of like where you are and where, where you were. Oh, where I was. So I guess... My grieving, believe it or not, started during his hospice day Mm -hmm. Um, because I had to make the decisions for him. Mm -hmm. So I think it all came down that this is it. Mm -hmm. And so, no, actually before, maybe like two weeks before that, um, he wasn't able to answer his phone. He went through cancer. And I knew then, and I started, like, so, so grief hits us all differently, and so the emotion I felt was anxious. Mm. Like, I was just like, okay, because I knew everything was going to fall on me. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know what everything was, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So yeah. it was just like, with the doctors, I didn't know what that was going to be. With, like, the funeral, I didn't know what that was going to be. And all of this was a new experience. Um, and I thank y'all, mm-hmm. by the way, because y'all were so instrumental in helping me do that. Shout out to South Shake the Conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did. We did. yeah, yeah. And um, so mine was what you would call complex grief because it was, like, the emotional side of it, right, of processing it. But then it was the business side of it that also brought up other emotions and other, like, physical things, emotional things, um, financial things. So in that, it, it made it um, interesting, um, as well as having to take the leadership role in it. Um, where I am today, I would say, it's definitely a healing journey. Um, before my father passed away, a few years before he passed, we really started our father-daughter relationship. Mm-hmm. So I felt like that was God giving us were me the closure of the relationship mm-hmm. that I needed. And so that helped kind of with my grief because mm-hmm. um, I was able to look back and see how he prepared me for what I had to walk through. And so today I, I look back on it, of course, missing him, but more appreciative of who he was, um, the gift of life God had given him um, and me and him and just processing it from a standpoint of, I didn't have to handle it perfectly Mm -hmm. because that was something that I thought I had Mm -hmm. to do. And Mm -hmm. so really allowing myself to be vulnerable and say I need help or, hey, I'm afraid, and these sillies coming down here and and making me laugh was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, But today I'm much better, Mm -hmm. much further along in my journey because I think Like I said, your body keeps a memory. So even when you said it was two years, I was like, dog, Mm -hmm. it is. And so mine is is interesting if I have to categorize it because, like, I was so used to my dad being gone most of my life. Mm -hmm. That kind of helped me handle him being gone for the rest of my life. Wow. So... You know, it, and, and it comes different feelings with that, but it's it's like overall I feel gratitude because mm. I was just like I learned how to handle without you, and I'm learning how to handle without you. Mm-hmm. Right. So, wow. Yeah. Okay, ladies, you want to share? Um, I... Okay. Well, I think for for me, my grief process was different for um, mom and dad, so mm-hmm. it, it just looked very different. I think with dad, I experienced. Um, anger Mm -hmm. um because I felt like um God had just let me down Mm -hmm. um because I just thought well I mean 
we're we're saved and we're doing everything right. I mean, a, a very immature thought process, mm-hmm. but um, just thinking, you know, well, we love God, and why would you allow this to happen? And how could you just let us down like this? And we, I thought that if we had faith, that you would do it, and all of that. So I went through that whole jazz, and I was just angry. Um, and uh, I, 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 I didn't walk away from God, but I just was in a place where I, I had to redefine and rediscover my relationship with him in a new way. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn how to trust him again because I just was completely over it. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was, that was uh, me dealing with dad. And so, and then with me dealing with mom, I think I, I experienced more sadness. Mm -hmm. Um, It was, it was less of a, of a letdown because of what she had taught, what she mama, what mama had taught us during the process with dad. And so I sort of kind of knew where to put my mindset, where to kind of be. Did it hurt? Yep. But I was I was just really sad because, I mean, I, I went through the faith thing again with just, you know, because she was a woman of faith and she was a woman of prayer. And I just thought, man, this ain't working. Like, God, dog, this, we, we failed again, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And so I think that was the initial gut punch for me that I had to overcome that. And it's, it's crazy because I think in those early days and early months, it's almost like I heard her voice every day. Mm-hmm. And it was like she ushered me through the process of, and she always would say, uh, like if she disagreed with something, y'all know she would say, oh, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Like she just say no so many times, like, oh, absolutely not. You know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And I would hear that when I was going down a path of, Man, this ain't working. What is what is faith about anyway? Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. And now it seems like faith is all I talk about, mm-hmm. you know, which is so interesting. Um, so so I think uh, for me, the grieving process was very, very difficult, was very challenging, but also I'm grateful for it because I can look back and I think about the faith journey and the growth journey and how my relationship with God has become more... Um, I've just become more knowledgeable, uh, more in tune, uh, more trusting, I think, um, because I, I, I think I put him to the test and I said, you're going to have to earn this back. I know the nerve of me to say that, but I, I just was like, you, you're going to have to earn my trust back because I don't trust you. Like, mm-hmm. look, look what you did, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And Lord, forgive me. Um, but I, <laughs> I know. So that, that was where I went through my journey. <clears throat> And to, and, and to talk about it in past tense as if it's completely over, that's erroneous, you know, because I still do um, get a get a scent every now and then, or I call them triggers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so sometimes every now and then I have a trigger where I remember something or I hear something. I still have a voicemail from daddy. Daddy died in 2010. I still got his voicemail. I've got two okay. voicemails from mama, mm-hmm. um, and she died in two, uh, 2017. So I still, you know, have that uh, stuff. I look at pictures. That all of that still exists, but the journey. I think the when the scripture talks about um, he'll turn your sorrow mm-hmm. into joy. Mm-hmm. Like I really know what that means. Like mm-hmm. I don't look at things and cry because I'm sad. I cry because well, I'm I'm thankful because I know where they are and I understand that. And I'm also thankful because. God has has healed my heart in the process, yes. and I know where I was. I know how angry I was, and I know how let down I felt, mm-hmm. and I know how I just wanted to just walk away from this whole, what I call this whole stupid church thing. This ain't nothing anyway. That mm-hmm. I mean, I was just angry, mm-hmm. and so I remember where I was and how far God has brought me from that point in my life. And I'm just, I guess to your point, gratitude. And I just get so thankful and so appreciative Mm -hmm. of the healing that was, that he did. I mean, because it was possible, like, Mm -hmm. like you actually healed a broken heart. Wow. So you do keep your word, you know, that kind of thing. So that, I think that's my, my journey in a nutshell. So, so I, I still, work to articulate my process um so of course different with dad and mom also um but definitely more so um with with dad it was more fear because Mm -hmm. it was unknown like like it's like no one's ever died he was like the first of his siblings to pass away and it's it's, well first of the the set set side but um it was and there were years between that Mm -hmm. so i mean and it's it's a lot it was a lot of 21 Mm -hmm. and so um and i remember just just 
when it happened, just just like feeling, I, the only way I know how to describe it is I was in a bubble. I was walking in a bubble and, and like I was angry. And I remember I got a new boss maybe like two weeks after that. And I told him exactly what I thought about his policies that he was going to <laughs> Because it was like the filter, whatever the thing is that helps us with self-control, that says, don't say that, that's not nice. Or don't do that, that's mean. It was broken. And when I tell you, everybody got it. Like if I felt like saying it, you were going to hear it. It was actually a concert that my brother was uh, at the, there. He's, he's sitting behind the counter, but he was doing a concert in Winston-Salem, uh, North Carolina. And the church is, I think that church is not close, but he was doing a concert there, and we had come there. And he's doing his concert, and he says, you, come here. And he calls me up, and I'm you're like, what you want? You know, mm -hmm. and we, we're up here, and he laid hands on me, and I could hear the bubble pop, like, boom. Mm -hmm. And when the bubble popped, I remember thinking, okay, I'm outside the bubble. What am I, what, this, this yeah. isn't, this mm -hmm. is new. Mm -hmm. This is new. And so I'm outside of the bubble and it's feeling like quicksand. Mm -hmm. And, and we moved away. So all of these new feelings. So I ended up moving to Chicago and I remember just, I kept saying, if I could just keep going, mm -hmm. if I don't stop, yeah. Yeah. you know, if you just keep yeah. going, everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And I was working out one day, and, and I always listen to different music, and the whining song, When You Cry, mm -hmm. I'm right, right, comes on. And then I'm, ba I mean, I'm bawling, I'm bawling. And, and if you know anything about Jones men, Jones men try to fix it real quick. Mm -hmm. So my husband's not a Jones man, but he put a Jones man moment. He said, don't you ever listen to that music again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like that's not the answer. Throw it away. Get this away from me. And so I was like, no. And I remember going to sleep that night. And and if you have those kind of dreams where you see yourself, you're in the dream, but you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're physically you. Mm -hmm. And I was in my kitchen, and the phone rang, and I answered the phone. And my dad said, you called me? And I was like, oh, my God. Are you on the phone? And he's like, yeah, you called me. And I remember having this long conversation with him, and he's like, I see you, and you're doing this, and you're doing that, and you're doing this. From that day to this one, I've never cried because it was my moment of closure. It was, it was, it was almost like what I needed, it, and my mind shifted from grief to joy, mm -hmm. and it's like I, I will now do everything that I said I was going to do. Mm -hmm. Because this is the legacy that you've established. So that kind of set me on like that trajectory. Mm -hmm. Then mom mm -hmm. was different. Because it was like, um, I remember hers was different because I was believing God mm -hmm. for like this grand miracle. Like I was just like, oh, this is going to be on national TV. Mm -hmm. Like the world is going to see, mm -hmm. like, the, like the guy for the bills, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're going to see this miracle and then no. Mm -hmm. And I remember like saying, okay, I'm, I'm confused. I don't, did, did I miss something? I thought this is what we were going. I thought we were going this way. I thought we were going to do this. And, and, and I was pregnant at the time. I was pregnant with, with Crystal. And so I'm processing it. And as I'm processing it, I'm still really trying to understand, like, did this really happen? And I remember going to bed one night. And, and because I was pregnant older with her, uh, they make you do all these tests and all this stuff and everything, you know, they, when they think you, you're over 35, you're too old to be having mm -hmm. kids, you know, so they shoot you all up, all this stuff. So I go through all these tests and while, um, and, and I never got a negative report, but I could discern that they were going to give me one. I could fit, like I could feel it. I was like, these people are going to tell me something because they call me in for an extra visit and all this other stuff. And I remember laying down. <laughs> Laying down, and if you ever heard the audible voice, how the enemy will plant things in your mind. Mm -hmm. So I was laying down, and, and I was asleep, but I, in between sleep, and the enemy said, your baby is going to, and when he got to the word to, I was ready to say, you are a liar. Mm -hmm. And the truth in you, and, and, but before I could say it, my mama said, you are a liar. And the truth in there, you foul demon. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, she began to pray, and I remember sitting up like, is it me? Mm -hmm. But I felt like this this tap, like, no, 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 I got you. Go. Mm -hmm. And it, it it was that moment, and I had a, a, a one very similar. On the way to work, 
I was going to work and I was I was really frustrated. When we're frustrated, we would always call our parents. Mom, this is what's happening. Da 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 da. And then she, girl, you ain't got just the calming, soothing. Yeah. She couldn't fix your problems, but sometimes just telling them, yeah. you're like, Mom, this is what's happening. And I'm riding to work and I am in like in like mad but want to cry but you don't want to cry because you don't want people to think they got you so you're mad but you want to cry because you want to fight but then you can't fight and I'm in it yeah right you're mad and then you got to be saved because Jesus said you know so I'm experiencing all these and I could feel myself filling up in the like I'm I'm here and the tears are about to break and I always listen to the same songs over and over in the car all, always over and over and over I never shuffle I don't do shuffles because I, I like to predict my stuff I'm in the in the I know sorry I just don't I don't shuffle but I'm in the car and and I'm full and the shuffle comes on and her prayer comes on mm. you will not fall you will not trip and I remember saying <gasps> and like getting that second wind like <sighs> and I was like I hear you I hear you I hear you and to me that was God holding my hand Right through this process, mm -hmm. I have so many moments like that, that God says, I made the decision, but I promise you that I'm going to hold your hand. Mm -hmm. And so even as I walk through that, it always encourages me to say their living was not in vain. Mm -hmm. like, like everything we needed from them, we had it when they left. Yeah. And any additional pieces that we need, it is the Father in heaven who will give it to us. Mm -hmm. Like we have it, mm -hmm. and 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 I didn't. I realize now there are so many times I could be moving through the house, and I hear, you know, I told you you're not supposed to do that. I told you don't put that. Oh, sorry, my bad, mom. You know, you just taking it. But and and we know and it's, it's the not them it's not them, them right? It's them. right, they're but it's them. the things yeah. that you've been taught yeah. that come you. up. So when the scripture mm -hmm. talks about study and reading, so that that when you need it, it comes back up. Mm -hmm. It's the same with those previous interactions. Mm -hmm. It's those things that you know to do that you're reminded to do in real time. I think we just use their voice because they're the person yeah, that told us those things. Yeah. Right? So, so my grief process for me, when I had the moment of reckoning to, to understand I got them and what they gave me and I can use that, it, it really made it a lot lighter. I'll say, mm. yeah, a lot like mm. mm. well, mm. well, I don't know what to say after all that, but, um, your yeah, your my, my experience, and my experience was a little different. Mm -hmm. my, my experience was a little different because I think I, my experience was a, a, a little bit more compounded in a, in a way because I had so many things happening like back to back to back to back to back. So, you know, when dad passed away, I remember, um, Canton sent me home because I was living in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Canton sent me home because he was out uh, on the water and, and couldn't get back or whatever. So he had sent me home and um, we, we, when we all flew in or whatever and I ended up flying back, um, you know, a month later. And I was with him in his final days, but not really knowing that it was his final days because I, it never appeared, to, it never yeah. came to my mind mm -hmm that there was a possibility that he wasn't going to be, like, it just did, like, I knew if God was going to heal anybody, mm -hmm. it was going to be him. him. <laughs> like, like, of course. Yeah. And I remember just saying so matter-of-factly to God one day that I was like, oh, well, I mean, you can't actually take him because, you know, my life don't work without him, so what's we going to do? Like, this, like, so I'm just really in this, because it, it did not... Once, you know, the initial shock of the stroke happened, after that, he was kind of on the, to me, on the mend. Right. And so it never, mm -hmm. like, of course he's going to be better. And even the day he died, he went to physical therapy. And he was doing things and all that. So I never crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. that. And so a lot of, now I do use that day, dad's final moments for, um, to really measure time for me. And because the, the Bible talks about that we are to, you know, really measure the time because you don't know, you know, what's what you got to be accountable for the time. And I remember we would go, I remember that the, the, from the moment we woke up, every errand we did that day, everything we did up until 
when he passed away that afternoon. I, I can count it. And I remember everywhere we, we went to, uh, uh, we had went to Walmart, we went to um, get gas, we went to his physical therapist. So I had to get receipts because I was like paying for stuff and whatever. So I was like, going to keep the receipts. And so all the receipts had time stamps on them. And so for years, I would have those receipts mm -hmm. as T minus four hours. Wow. T minus three hours. Mm -hmm. T and not knowing. That just in another hour or so, my whole world is getting ready to change. You know, so that kind of made me real, like when it came to like time and being intentional and all of that stuff, that, that's kind of where that started for me in that moment. Because I had no idea that by 12 o'clock when we were at his appointment at 8, no idea by 1230 afternoon, a doctor was going to be looking me in my face telling me that my dad was gone. Yeah. Ne ne didn't think about, you know what I'm saying, that. And so, you know, that whole process was very difficult for me because at, at, at that moment I felt like I had to take care of my mom. You know, let me let me take care of my mom, let me get her together, you know, because that was, you know, letting her say goodbye, you know, all of that, you know, and you're, you're there to watch it and listen mm -hmm. and all of these mm -hmm. things. And so you're taking all of this yeah. in. And I, I still, uh, I tell people, I say I was the only person in the room when mama came in to say her goodbyes to him. And I wish to God I would have recorded it. That was the most poetic, most beautiful thing I had ever heard in my life, what she said to this man. And she was just like, you are my whole life. She said, I don't even know, I don't even remember life oh. before you. You know, just all of the, and I was just like, God, because they were together since they were 16. Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about, that's yeah. a long time to be with yeah. somebody. And she was like, I was yeah. with them more than I wasn't with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. so it's like, what am I supposed to do? And she, so she's literally asking him, because she's like, well, Clarence, what am I supposed to do now? Hmm. What am I supposed to do? You know, so for me, it was like, okay, well, I got to take care of my mom. I got to I gotta do this. So I kind of got into work mode, business mode, get the, get the funeral done, get this, 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 this. So I'm going, going, going. And um, after the funeral is over, because of course, for me, that's when my grieving started. Mm -hmm. It didn't start when he died. It started mm -hmm. when everybody went home went work and everybody's yeah. life is going back. And I remember feeling angry, like, how dare y'all life move on? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, so y'all yes. just going to yeah, go home right. to y'all mm -hmm. lives and just, yes, yes, you know, whatever. Like, how dare y'all, you know, mm -hmm. do this and whatever. And so I remember having to go and, and, and do that. And I ended up coming home, coming back to Atlanta, and I was, uh, uh, I had a situation happen with my car. So anytime something would happen with it, and it was always something going on with a car with us, <laughs> just always, I, I would call Daddy, and I <coughs> called his cell phone. I, I don't even know what I was thinking. I didn't even, it didn't even register that he'd been dead, you know, whatever. I called his cell phone. No, I called my mama. No, that's what I, I called my mama. She was on the prayer line. She called me back from daddy's cell phone and she had not turned his phone off. That's what happened. And I did the, oh, that's daddy. And I answered the phone and she was like, I am so sorry. And I, I cried for 45 minutes straight. Mm -hmm. So I had no more strength in my body. Mm -hmm. And so I remember having to be conscious about what my new life looked like because I was so dependent on my dad. Like I wasn't married when daddy pass away mm -hmm. um so i was always very dependent on his everyday advice that what i'm supposed to do about the car that what i'm supposed to do about this that what you think about this that, 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 like all of that like I, it was like he was a constant like mm -hmm. i knew that i depended on my dad for everything and so i had to find out i had to grow up then because i didn't have that and so then when mama passed i was going through a divorce at the time so i had to move back home had to pretty much start over and then i find out she has cancer mm -hmm. and not only did she have cancer it's stage four mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because you're like i would notice you know certain things so this is kind of like my every day you know because you guys were away so you kind of you kind of didn't see the daily transitions the daily or whatever so i would notice certain things and i remember um you know several instances where i would kind of notice like hmm that's weird because she never does that hmm that's weird you know but not mm -hmm. think because it never even even with mama and i'm talking about i would see the transitions and but it never entered my mind 
that she could die. I just, because I was like, because if anybody, again, here right, I go. Because right, yeah. if anybody going to get healed, it's going to be her. Right. If anybody. And gonna get it right. Get that right. Like, and regardless of what the doctors were saying, regardless of what I was saying, I knew, but, but, but I also knew my mom. And I knew that fight that she usually had, mm-hmm. yeah. she wasn't doing it this time. And so I'm like, oh, God. So it's, it was for me to keep going again. That became my, mm-hmm. my thing. Uh, you know, morning, noon, and night, I, had, I was so regimented. And that ain't even my personality for people who don't know me. That's not my personality, to be so regimented. The and so that's, that was the... the yes, yeah, that's the same. <laughs> they did it. Yeah, because they know me. Yeah. But I had every, I mean, every minute of her day regimented. Like, what she ate, what time, what we do. So I kept myself busy with trying to keep her alive. Like, that was like, nope, I'm a, nope we're going to do this. this, 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 this. Uh, and so it was like that the entire pretty much process of, of taking care of brother. By the way, I was so worn out. I remember I was so tired one day. I walked into a wall. And and nobody could help. Like I lit, and it was just like boom because I wasn't sleeping. You know, you're just doing all the things yeah. in an attempt to try to save. You know, you're just yeah. trying to do whatever yeah. you can to grab hold. Yeah. And you couldn't control it. You were out of control. Yeah. And so I I mourned mama's death way differently than mm-hmm. daddy and way longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, way, way longer. I think I mourned. I, I didn't become okay until two years after. Like like mm-hmm. to where I was old. And I think it was after I moved out of the, the house. Mm-hmm. Then I was able to kind of like, okay, now we got the figure this out, kind of put put one foot in front of the other type situation because even after she was dead, I said, have Ari. Mm-hmm. And so trying to take it, trying to, you know, all of those things. And so I'm still now, mom been dead six years, daddy been dead 13, 13. in May, next, next month, still processing certain things. Mm-hmm. I can say, however, just like I said before when we were talking about, um, you know, in one of the other episodes, how I felt like my heart had been crushed because I had so many compounding things happening mm-hmm. all at the same time. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I do believe, like, even now, um, me and my mama was more alike than anybody. Like, mm-hmm. I was, did any of her kids, and I always, I make this joke now, saying, I don't know if the rest of them belong to her, but I know I did. I know she had me. <laughs> I don't know where the rest of them came, because me and her are so much alike. But it was something that I used to fight against. It's something I honor now. Yeah. Something I love now. Yeah. And so, anytime I think about her, I think about her in, in the most glowing terms. And me and her bumped heads a lot, but we, I, I only think about her from the standpoint of all the wealth and wisdom that she left me. Mm-hmm. And so I can look at my heart now and be like, God, you really did him. Because I was mad at her. I was mad because I knew she knew enough about the faith that mm-hmm. if, she to do, if she wanted to, you could have stayed and you would sit there and you did like that. So yeah. I, I was yeah. mad at her for like yeah. two years yeah. until yeah. I had to kind of, because yeah. I, underst- I understood the level of, I understood. Right. And so when she passed away, I had to forgive her. Mm-hmm. I had to forgive myself. I had to, you know, go through that. And then once I did that, God made me whole. I see the benefit of having them as parents. Mm-hmm. I, I, I see the benefit even of God allowing them to go on and, and leaving us here to continue in a legacy. Mm-hmm. Because I, I feel like the, the, the deviling of the anointing, the deviling of everything mm-hmm. really was given to all of us when they transition. We may still be in children phase, kind of, mm-hmm. you know, in the things of faith had they still yeah, been they here because they yeah. probably would have still been kind of, you know, we go to mama for every, everything. Mm-hmm. We was, yeah. mom, what you think about this? Yeah. You know, and sometimes God's like, okay, no, I need you to come to me. And I'm like, I'll talk to you later. Let me go ask my mama, right? Yes. And so, you know, uh, that that whole thing. So grief is, and it comes in waves. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So even for those who are listening, it comes in waves. Uh, we make it okay for each other to grieve and to show emotion and yes. to miss and to, you know, mm-hmm. be sad one day, be happy the next. Mm-hmm. And, and, ain't, and ain't no rules to this. Mm-hmm. Just don't get stuck in the pit. Yes. All right. Don't get stuck in the pit. So that's all we have for today. Like um, there's so much more we, there's so much more we can say. We might have to do a part two because we didn't really get into the steps. We may have to do that. But um, for right now, guys, we are out of time and we will see you guys next week. Love you. Bye bye.